Assalamu alaikum. My name is Naila Siddiqui. I've been working at ICN Noor for the past eight years, and this is my fourth year teaching kindergarten. I'm going to be sharing the kindergarten curriculum with you. The goals that we have for our kindergarten students, we want our students to feel good about being Muslims. We want our students to develop bonds of friendship and achieve a sense of belonging. We want our students to know what being a good Muslim means and to embody that in their character. We want our students to understand that knowledge is given great importance in our deen. We want our children to experience a sound academic program in math, science, and language, in addition to developing morals and ethics. The learning targets that we have for our students are, we want, our, we want to be able to provide opportunities for students to take charge of their learning and allow them to step up and make a difference in their life and the world. We want to be able to provide opportunities for students to be engaged in experiential learning that furthers their under curricular understanding and develops life skills and helps to make a positive impact on the world. Social and emotional awareness. We want to be able to introduce and support for self-awareness and self-management, not only towards school, but also towards their life success. We want our students to be able to recognize their emotions and in others as well. Learn and practice strategies to manage their own behavior. We also want our students to identify their personal and academic goals. And also be aware, aware of social and interpersonal skills. We also want our students to develop and use listening skills to identify others' feelings. We want them to learn strategies to resolve conflicts in a positive way. We want them to take part in decision making and take responsibility. We want them to consider consequences and make positive choices. We also want our students to be involved in the decision making process. For math, um, the main topics that our students will be covering are counting and cardinality, operations and algebraic thinking, numbers and operations in base 10, measurement and data, and geometry. In the following slides, you're going to see examples of students um, doing their independent work. And um, this is, of course, done in person, but we will try our best to provide opportunities for students to do most of these um, activities, even though they're learning online, inshallah. Language arts. Um, we have reading um, for informational text. We have basic foundational skills for reading, some writing standards, speaking and listening standards, and language standards. Um, overall, for informational text, they will be keying into um, main idea and supporting details to understand the text, use the informational text um, to build on their prior knowledge. Um, the basic foundational skills that we will be working are, are uh, print concepts, understanding that words are made up of letters and letters are associated with certain sounds that when you put them together, you make words, um, be able to build fluency in their reading by practicing um, daily reading um, in writing, be able to write with a purpose in mind and with an audience, um, be able to um, communicate by presenting what they understand, not only in language arts, but in math, science, social studies, and math as well. Um, the basic conventions that the students will learn are what a complete sentence is, 
that a sentence、um, begins with a capital letter and ends with a punctuation mark.、Um, we will be、um, doing basic guided guided reading to help our children、um, meet their specific needs.、Mm. Traditionally, we have done guided reading in small groups, but we are going to target that、um, one on one through our learning A to Z program, inshallah.、Um, these are some strategies that the children will be learning, inshallah. Cafe menu is a format that we use to help with the specific skills in、uh, literacy. For example, checking for understanding, making a picture or a mental image. Back up and reread. Predict what will happen, then confirm it.、Um, for accuracy, they will be cross-checking using pictures to make sense of what they're reading. Fluency: be able to pick a good fit book. Pay attention to punctuation. Practice sight word, sight words, and、um, to expand their vocabulary, they will be tuning into interesting words and.、Um, Trying to use them. How to pick a good fit book?、Um, we are, even though we're online, we will try to、um, help ch children understand what it means to、um, pick a good fit book.、Um, so、um, when they are picking a book for themselves,、um, they should be looking for a book which they can read independently. They should have a purpose in mind. Why am I picking this book? Then interest. Does、um, the book interest them? Is it something that they like to read about? Is it about animals? Is it about、uh, um, their favorite places, or just fiction or nonfiction? And then they have to be able to understand、um, the words that are written. And if they're able to do all of those, then that's a good fit book for them. It's a good choice, and they should be able to read it. If not, then they should pick up another book.、Um, examples of some independent language activities: Class Pet. This is something we will do if children come to school in person. Inshallah. Science. The three main topics that we cover in science are life science, earth science, and physical science. Currently, we're doing life science, and we're working on living and non-living. Examples of students engaged in some science and social studies activities in these pictures. Scientist of the week. We choose one student to be the scientist of the week, and、um, they present their science experiment to their classmates every week. We encourage them to do their experiment independently, be able to explain what they're trying to show through their experiment. Social studies, social studies, most mostly about learning, learning and working together.、Um, Also、um, about being a Muslim who models the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam,、um, and that involves in acting in a certain way. In social studies, also we look at the calendar, we look at days, weeks, months, and year, and how time passes. The geography part of social studies, we look at the whole Earth. Which is divided into continents, which further is divided into countries, states, communities, the neighborhood, their school,、um, or and plus their neighborhood. So breaking it down, and then being aware of the cardinal directions and what they mean. When the children are doing calendar and weather. Um, which we do every morning, they're involved in a lot of um, um, under. There's a lot of understanding that goes on. So it's not only 
road counting. It's one-to-one -one correspondence, place value. We look at patterns. We make sense of numbers. Sometimes we will add and subtract. We will look at greater than, less than temperatures to understand what that means. Um, we might even go into odd and even numbers, um, especially with the, um, the temperatures that the children record every day. Um, being able to identify days of the week, months, um, understand why, mm, what it means to write the date in numbers, and what does a number, um, how does a number represent a month when we're writing it in numbers, and uh, being able to understand that. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for watching and um, inshallah, I'm looking forward to working with the children this year. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Arshia Saidi and I have the honor to be Islamic studies teacher for you students, inshallah, in kindergarten dolphins and sharks. Inshallah, this is my eighth year in uh, ICN Noor Academy and I Loved it ever since I joined. Alhamdulillah. Um, inshallah, I would like to share my presentation with you. Okay, I hope you can see that. So welcome to our Islamic Studies class of 2020-2021, inshallah. Uh, so my main area that I would like to work with the students is that I want them to know who Allah is and our relationship with Him. I would like them to learn you know, how much Allah loves them because I know when they know how much Allah loves them, they'll be so much more eager to love Allah and also to develop a love for his name because I feel like when you have a lifelong you know, yearning to learn about your deen, you automatically develop a strong Muslim identity. And that's the next thing that I would like them to have. Um, developing a strong Muslim identity is, you know, not just um, you know, obtained from being with Muslim, other Muslims, but also just from the memories of being learning Islamic knowledge from you know learning surahs from hearing stories about you know the Quran stories the Prophet stories learning all the different Islamic songs and all the different values inshallah that we will be um, trying to put in our daily routine throughout the day uh, the teaching style um, and activities that I usually tend to use is very, very casual. You know, we use uh, personal discussions. Um, it's not really, you know, like a formal textbook that I'm using, but just, you know, just very, very um, personal experiences that the kids like to share also. And we read a lot of stories. Um, and, you know, stories, as you know, even Quran is full of them. And um, it helps us to, the whole stories help us to connect uh, with our real lives. They create a memory and how uh, these stories impact us today. It's a very effective tool. So I do use the stories a lot. Um, we have casual discussions. We use role play, which the students enjoy a lot. We, I bring a lot of visuals and props and models. We sometimes will watch a video and at times some craft projects. And believe me, through a lot of fun, we are learning a lot. Our curriculum is packed with concepts of Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we are learning so much about how to put Allah first in our lives and make sure that we are doing everything sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all that is packed and we are talking about Tawheed. And then of course the pillars of Islam and the stories of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and stories of uh, other Prophets alayhi wa sallam. We spend a long time on Sira and, of course, Islamic manners and character development. I feel like character development is a big chunk of our 
Islamic studies program because at this age, that is Islamic studies. And at the, I don't just put it in, you know, one segment of our, you know, uh, year, but it's throughout the year. And whatever we're talking about, character development is a part of it. This is what a usual classroom, a typical classroom would look like, where we would have some um, posters and props and videos and um, you know, models and sometimes arts and crafts. Of course, this year is going to be a little bit different. You know, I will be having a remote classroom and I sure will be missing, you know, having the students in a physical classroom, but we will make our own virtual learning circle and hope to accomplish great things, inshallah. Um, I will see the students every Tuesday and Thursday for about 20 minutes, inshallah, the dolphins and the sharks have different timings and I think I've sent that in my seesaw announcements and with the, along with the link and Miss Nyla also has it in the schedule. Please feel free to call me or reach out to me, email me um, or you know, connect through any other communication way. We're going to be having class tag and if you have any questions, any feedback, any suggestions, please feel free to reach to me. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Kalter Salim. I am going to be a memorization teacher this year. Alhamdulillah, I'm so honored and grateful to be a part of uh, ICN Noor Academy for the fourth year this year. Alhamdulillah, I wanted to share with you my PowerPoint to uh, go through all the goals and curriculum, inshallah. So, curriculum and goals. So this year is going to be e-learning. Right this year, we are, you, the students are going to be um, joining my room through the link, starting with the greeting, how to greet in Islam, and how uh, to be ready for Quran class. For example, the student can not be having any snack or eating while we are having the classroom uh, or breakfast. And then, uh, um, so we we'll start the, the dua, greeting and dua, and then we revise the previous uh, lesson that we had we already did, and we start we add a new uh, part of the lesson every time, and we practice. So uh, student needs to practice every every day the new lesson so they can we can advance and we need to work together parents and teacher so we can help the student memorize his part of the of the lesson inshallah so our goal is how to teach the student in the right way the, with the right makhalish of the quran with the jweed rules like if you have uh, uh, all the throat letters how they should be coming from your throat. It's like when you say a and a with fatha, it's not like you say amila or amila. So we have to say say it in the right way with the right pronunciation with the, from the from where the letter should be coming from. Like the hamza is down in the throat and the ayin is in the middle of the throat. So the and then I try to explain to the kids how so they can try uh, to 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 say it in and grab that uh, sound from the right spot of the uh, of the letter. And uh, also the, the characteristic, focus on the characteristic of the letter, like if you have, uh, for example, qalqala letters, when I, uh, like if I say falaq, and then qaf, so that's the, they, they will uh, understand the qaf, it's not kaf. So that's the first part for makharj. But the characteristic of the qaf is when it has sukun, you have to bounce it and you call it qalqala. So uh, that's what uh, I want them to, while they are memorizing the Quran, they will get these uh, steps of rules and tajweed uh, uh, rules, like falaq, uh, like not one, like we say it without qalqala, and then when you say it, how we say it with qalqala and correct their pronunciation. So this is all our goals, using all this uh, uh, um, like rules of Tajweed and technology that I am going to to uh, use is uh, homework and assignment would be going through um, 
posted on Seesaw every Friday afternoon. You can check and find what we did and what how what uh, we are at, and then you can find these uh, uh, some kind of a sheet that uh, like uh, the student when they are beginners like starting the Quran the first time. So this is the first sheet would be it would be sent to them. And then if they are doing only one or two A, they can color it and send it back like they are done with it. They can practice and and uh, the parents they can check on them and then if they are done they can color all the whole surah and then so on. If they are done with the second surah all the way when they are done with the surah. So with the with this sheet they can go to the next sheet. This is the, would be the, the second level of the of the Quran. Uh, there is Quran tracker and then another uh, surah uh, list. So here in the second Quran tracker, you can put the date when he starts learning this uh, the surah and when he's done all the way when he's done here. These are the boxes. Uh, this is the number of the ayah, number of the boxes, number of the ayah. So when he's done. Every time with one A, you can check check one box that all the way that he's done, and then you put the date also here when he's done. So we know how the progress of the uh, his memorization of every surah here. And then at the end when he's done, I can send him this like he's done with all the surah, and then you can add more. Child. It depends. This is not a competition between the kids. So everyone he have his own. Um, he can be learning faster. Or learn. the, the main thing is he uh, learning. Um, the student should learn it in the right way and in the right uh, like pronunciation and uh, the rules of the uh, inshallah. So and then I will be sending also links to help with the memorization for the kids. Uh, they can follow along and then every day, like I said, five to ten minutes, uh, listen to this uh, surah and repeating with the student, with the, with the sheikh, like with the link when they hear it. So that will help them to memorize the Quran. And parents will check and sign reading log to show their progress. Students can record themselves reciting uh, to post for, for feedback. So if, uh, if you have any question, you can just send me the, the the part where they are ready uh, with the Quran so they can just correct them and we'll, we'll meet again in the class or and I can uh, send it back with my feedback, inshallah. So this is uh, the map of the, our curriculum for the kindergartner. We can, we can have a first level even in kindergarten if they are uh, first time in ICN, maybe they don't have, uh, they didn't start Quran, so they can start with always, always we start with the Fatiha, so the Nas, the Khas, all the way here. And then if they are level more, uh, like they know already this one, you can just start and uh, review and uh, go, uh, go ahead and add more Surah. So the first week we are going to be testing them and see their level. Uh, the same way for the pre-K, kindergarten. So um, yeah, we put them in the groups and levels, so we know where where the student they are, so they can uh, start in from from the uh, surah. And uh, for kindergarten, they at the end of the year may will be uh, practicing and memorizing the last two ayat of surah Baqarah. And uh, inshallah, this is. Uh, for the Fridays, so Fridays we do salah, wudu, and uh, collecting the uh, moves of uh, the way how we should pray, why we should pray to Allah. And this, we are going to be talking and putting, uh, adding uh, like puzzles. They can they can have activity about wudu, uh, put the steps of wudu in orders, and uh, they, they can do uh, share with them like. Uh, uh, they can post themselves they are doing wudu and how to do it in a correct way and uh, we can sing a song to use to sing it like we have these kind of songs for uh, wudu steps and then they can uh, it helps them to memorize the steps of wudu and salat we uh, we start with the, how we should uh, stand up in front of Allah and all this way, uh, all the way till 
I mean, when they start, you know, the takbir and the ruku and sujood and all the way, we're not going to let them pray the, the first time, but uh, just uh, guide them and teach them what to say in every step, all the way to by the end of the year, inshallah, they will be learning how to pray correctly. This is how we used to sit down on Fridays, we have sadaqa and all this, uh, the kids, they are enjoying their Friday every time. Alhamdulillah. So, Jazakumullah Khair, and thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. And uh, I see and know is fun, and uh, it has a lot of things to be done, inshallah. Jazakumullah Khair. I am looking forward to meet you, to meet the student, inshallah, soon. Jazakumullah Khair. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sister Fatima Khan, and I'm a physical education teacher at Al Noor Academy. For last three years. This is going to be my third year, inshallah, teaching, and I'm looking forward to it. So, in middle of March, as we all know, we first went with online classes, and I was a little concerned uh, as teaching in person is very different than teaching online. Uh, when I start my day, I bring the kids to the gym, and we start a normal day at the gym. I blow up the whistle, they start running around the gym. We have a lot of fun, but online was another story altogether. So I was a little skeptical uh, if I would be able to capture children's attention, but to my utter amazement, not only was I able to get, ca catch their attention, they enjoyed it so much that even after the class, they sent me pictures of them doing the yoga poses with, along with the family, which was very uh, heartwarming. So in terms of physical development, I liked uh, the students um, to kick, catch the ball a couple of times throughout the week when we are doing classes uh, in person, but we cannot do those things uh, since uh, we would not be meeting in person. So I was thinking, how can we develop the gross motor skills without meeting them in person? So I came up uh, with a little bit of a curriculum uh, how we are going to be doing that. Uh, one thing which I introduced, uh, which I did not do it uh, before, would be mindful minute. Uh, a mindful minute, for those who do not know what it is, is just children closing their eyes for a minute, focus on their breathing, and notice their surrounding. It helps them with stress. It helps them with focus. Uh, there's a website, uh, I can send the presentation later and you can click on that and see for yourself or when I'm doing my four minutes, maybe the kids would do it with you later on. So that's what it is. Um, then we are going to go with the dynamic stretches. Uh, we can go uh, with uh, running on a spot, jumping on a spot. I introduced boxing moves, which they really enjoyed doing with me. We do squats, we do skipping, we do all kind of animal walks, bear walk, crab walk. We become superheroes by being practicing uh, Superman uh, exercises, which is very good for your actually upper uh, body strength. And we do planks and push-ups, uh, a lot of good things. And the children always amaze me how well they are able to be adaptable to all these exercises and the flexibility is amazing. So they always outdo me, of course, towards the end. <laughs> My only request, uh, if possible, would be if parents can buy simple equipment, not even equipment, some simple things like yoga, ball, uh, yoga mat, hula hoops, a medium-sized ball. And if not possible, I do understand uh, if you guys don't, uh, do not have uh, or not able to do that, no problem. I just wanted them to hold something while they're, they're doing the exercises just to get the feel of it. Um, my uh, other request would be to make sure wherever the kids are, uh, they have plenty of space to move around. There's no heavy furniture. God forbid, I do not want anybody to get an injury or anything like that. I hope and I pray that we come back to school and I see you all in person. But in the meanwhile, we have to make the most of what we have. I would love to meet you online. And uh, I would love the kids to have a lot of fun. 
and try to have normalcy in their lives, even in these unprecedented times. Wish you all the luck, inshallah, and I'll see you later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Qurat al Ain Zafar, and I will be teaching Quranic reading to pre kindergarten and kindergarten. So, this will be my inshallah fourth year teaching, and I'm going to share my screen um, before I get started. So, before I started working, I was a parent uh, at ICN. And I have loved ICN in both the capacities as a teacher and as a parent. So uh, the subject that I will be teaching uh, is Quranic reading. And we all know the importance of this subject that we have to read Quran properly. And there are so many important things related to that. But first of all, that's the first rite of Quran to read it properly. And we know that there are similar sounds of the words like off and calf. But if we don't say it properly, the meanings changes altogether. For instance, kalb means dog and qalb means heart. This sounds same, but if you're not pronouncing it in a correct way, the meanings change. And the importance of learning at this age that kids are sponges right now. They absorb whatever they are taught and it will stay with them for the rest of their lives, inshallah. So our philosophy uh, is, as a school, I say no academy and for this subject is to inculcate the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to develop the love of reading Quran. I want my students to get excited for reading Quran, that they're learning something new, they get excited about it. And of course, the basic and the main goal for all of us is to help our students become a good Muslim at the end of the day, inshallah. The goals of this subject is, the first and foremost important goal is to teach them, to teach my students the proper maharaj, the proper articulation of words, just as I mentioned, cough and calf, similarly, the and seen, se and the, the sounds that they, they sound similar, but there's a difference and how to, they should be able to know. And then to teach them the rules of the dream. We start off in pre-kindergarten with the letter recognition from and then we move on all the way to the complete rules of the dream, including mean sakina rules, mean sakina rules, um, and so on and so forth. And the, at the end, the goal is to help our students become a fluent reader of Quran, inshallah. And um, the expectations from the kids would be, the students would be to be on time, the links would be sent, and I'm sure you guys have seen it. Uh, just get the ready, get the students ready on time and get the book ready. I'm sure. Uh, most of you, all of you have got their books. Those of you who still did not get it, and, and the way we can manage um, to be without the book for a few days, I can send the uh, links and stuff like that for a few days. And the, one of my expectations from the students and from the parents would be to help your kid, to remind your kid to revise their lesson, if not every day, every other day. And I ask only five to 10 minutes because they're kids, they're younger, their attention span is less. I don't want them to revise for hours and hours, just five to 10 minutes, but it has to be every day or every other day, whatever lesson I'm doing in the class. So this year it, it, it is a little bit different. So a typical day would be, um, it would be a it's, it's a distant learning routine so it will be 20 minutes with a maximum of two students i will be taking two students um uh, every day uh, for every 20 minutes and there will be two days a week my class and two days a week quranic memorization class so i'm the quranic reading teacher and quranic memorization will be taught by another teacher so the quran class will be all four days of the week but two days quranic memorization and two days quranic reading inshallah 
The techniques that we will be using, basically we will be using Seesaw, and I'm sure you would have played around with it a little bit. If there is any problem, we are there to help and assist you, inshallah. We will be using video messages, we will be using audio messages, audio lessons, video lessons, and then flashcards and um, some other different props to keep the kids engaged and um, get them excited, inshallah. There will be some games. I know this subject becomes dry, um, especially for younger kids. So we will have a little bit of these techniques to keep them engaged. So uh, the curriculum is um, we start in pre-K-1 from the letter recognition again, which is from Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa, that how does the letter looks in the beginning of the letter, in the if there is a word, how does a letter looks in the beginning, in the middle, at the end? So they should be able to recognize the different shapes of the same letter. So each week we'll be introducing two to three new alphabets. And inshallah, starting from there, by the end of first year, they should be able to recognize all the letters, not only the alphabets, but also we'll be starting Harakat Fat Harakat Swadhamma. And um, in kindergarten, then we move on to joining Sukoon. And by the end of the kindergarten, our uh, hope and goal is that they learn the rules, basic rules of the trade, and there are so many kindergartners. They were last year too, and every year we have kindergartners who start reading Quran the proper way by the end of the kindergarten. So, and don't worry if your kids are at different level. If they don't know Alif Paratasa or they know a lot, inshallah, we adjust according to the needs of your uh, kids. And uh, then my contact info is qzafar at icnmasjid.org. And I'm just an email away. If there's anything, any problem, you can always get back to me. And um, inshallah, I will respond. And looking forward to a wonderful new year. Uh, it is distant learning. I know it's going to be a little bit hard, a little bit challenging. But inshallah, we all will be together in this. Inshallah, see you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.